Tonight, we've got a special artist, an artist that is legendary in both sound, statue, and presence. It's Miss Louise Tobin. I expected to go all over the world from Congress, Texas. When they asked me if I was interested in uh, donating my collection, I jumped at the chance because I want to perpetuate that music. It's so important to the culture of not only our country, but our, our world. I was born in Aubrey, Texas, a little rural community, and I want to get this music out into the hinterlands as well. I want those kids to hear it. And I think when they hear it, they'll like it. In your era, if we're going to talk about pop music, uh, you're mostly guitars and rhythm. And uh, that's rather limited uh, as opposed to a 20-piece uh, dance band, uh, harmonically. And uh, not always rhythmically, because it's so rude. But um, it's a whole other world. If you're a musician, you are valuable. You're valuable in many ways, but in particular to the culture of the world because that old adage did not get born out of a myth. Music restores the soul. Our special guest interview tonight is Mr. Spencer Wolf Smart the author for the Palomar blog. This week, not only the legend of jazz, but the... My name is Spencer Smart, and I'm a contributing author for the Palomar, the blog for George Spink's internationally renowned website, Tuxedo Junction. This afternoon, we have the distinguished honor to speak with the lady who was responsible for discovering Frank Sinatra and a star in her own right, Miss Louise Tobin. The way I strut my stuff. Nobody wants you when you're old and gray. There'll be some changes made today. There'll be some changes made. Louise, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to meet with you today and talk with us. It's a real honor. I wanted to start off by asking you a, a few questions about when you first got started. I noticed, know that when you first started in the, your career with Art Hicks, both at the at the Silva and the other clubs around the area, that you were the featured vocalist, and uh, you stayed at uh, the Silva for three months, uh, where you met Harry James, and who was playing the trumpet for the band. And uh, in a previous inter inter interview, you had stated that you were thrilled, and uh, your it was your uh, fulfillment not to have to wash dishes and so <laughs> I just wanted to see if you could tell us about uh, how that all came about and your your meeting Harry James and being part of that first uh, taking that first step with the Art Hicks Orchestra. My goodness Spencer I think you know more about me than I do <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well of course you know it, it was a wonderful era and uh, you're asking me uh, when I started, is that what you're asking me? Well, I'm saying when you started in 1932, what was it like being, the, being able to sing with a big band? And <laughs> it had to be a real thrill. I, well, it was. And I, uh, I had an older sister who liked big bands, and she used to play uh, records in our home. And uh, I just sort of, my first impression uh, of music was sort of, Big Bandish, along with the, the light crust doughboys from oh, Burrisville. Sure. <laughs> but um, I was aware of big bands because of, of her love of that music. And so, uh, but I was unaware that uh, I would ever have the opportunity to sing with one. And so it was, of course, um, an exciting time because I was just in high school, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, it, it was. Um, such a big adventure to have somebody ask me to come and sing to the band at that time. I can imagine. <laughs> like you said, I didn't have to wash dishes for a while. There you go. <laughs> There'll be a change in the weather, change in the sea. Before long, there'll be a 
previous interview you also stated that uh, during that period of time uh, when you were first with Art Hicks uh, moving around from you know club to club that you had to have a chaperone and your sister was your chaperone. Oh yes I was much uh, much too young to leave home without chaperone and so they uh, my family agreed to let me go with that name. I had been appearing on the floor show which came out of um, uh, winning the contest led to my being employed by the Palace Theater here in Dallas because in those days they had uh, number one uh, interview, uh, uh, number one concert and number two. One was uh, music and the second one was shorts for the kids, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, they put me uh, uh, as sort of a, a conciliatory conciliatory, can't say the word, <laughs> uh, just sort of a second prize. I couldn't go to New York to finish that, so I got to go into the Palace Theater. And having appearing there, one of uh, an agent saw me, and uh, or heard me, I guess, and asked my family if I could go to this little club in this town of Arlington, which then was a very small a filling station and a hotel and a car agency. Yeah, a big <laughs> and, city. A uh, big city. Yeah. For me, I, I was at home because Denton is not that far from sure. Arlington. So it was quite a, a thrill to uh, to get to do that. And uh, the band was uh, it was the band that you spoke of, Art Hicks. Uh, Hicks. Now, when you when when you moved off, you went to New York and uh, various clubs around the country. But uh, I understand that when you were when you got to New York, you and Harry eloped and ran off and got married in, in what was it May of 1936? 35. 35. <laughs> and how did that how did that go over with your sister and your parents? <laughs> Not very well at that point. However, uh, uh, they uh, they uh, after they got to know Harry, they were they were happy.
This is Energize, where music has found its way. I'm not... <laughs> I'm learning to speak Japanese. 